Uh, the floor is open. Anybody, anybody with a question, suggestion? Yes, please, madam. Good morning, everyone. My name is Aisuru Drame. I'm from the Gambia, Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy. Mine is a contribution regarding recruitment. In the Gambia, we are still struggling. Um, the portal has been launched last year, but only applications are done online, only. So the shortlisting are done, you know, the way it used to be. I was amazed yesterday when Vivian mentioned the shortlisting is done now within three minutes. I remember in one day, so I was asked to go and represent my office for an interview. So the guy that was supposed to be interviewed was, was relative to, uh, to the Secretary General. So in, that, in his file, there was no, no diploma, no certificates. What happened? The then PS, the Personnel Management Office, who is responsible for HR, came to the interview office and asked us to, you know, to recruit that guy. So it was just like I don't understand. So this is just, we are, we are, we are still struggling. So I just uh, wanted to add on this, on recruitment. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing uh, the Gambian experience. Yes, sir? Yes, um, good morning. Also from the Gambia. Um, this question, uh, oh, I needed some kind of clarification. Mr. Braza from Afralti, uh, you made a statement that degrees buy you a job, but skills make you to stay in that job. And using blockchain, can you elaborate more how blockchain could help in, I don't seem to understand, I needed clarification because you mentioned blockchain trying to address a situation like this. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, there any any one more question from anybody? Okay, uh, Mr. Baraza, since the second one was directed to you, if you would like also to take up the first one on the short listing. Thank you, uh, Republic of the Gambia. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, maybe I'll start with the first question. Uh, in terms of, and, and this is something I wanted to discuss in my presentation, but I, I didn't have enough time. When I was asking those questions, the involvement of HR personnel, uh, and actually this HR, HR department used to be called a long time ago personnel department. I think over time it turned into human resources because personnel look like a slave, a slave term. I, I also see it in my, in my organization that many HR department people don't get involved in CAPEX development. And that's where most decisions are made. In, when you're making that budget and you're an HR officer and you're just, re, it, the only thing you're being, and especially because I run a training institution, our budgets are normally the ones that are cut very quickly because they seem like they are not uh, very, very important. And other. But if you get involved with the CAPEX development, is when now you're able to deal with the issues to do with um, the processes and systems that will enable um, seamless recruitment of people without biases. And this is what AI is about to resolve. You know, um, of course, and I like what uh, my co-panelist has just done here. This, this is uh, some level of reducing biasing, biases because even the robot that is, is representing here is actually talking the Caribbean version of English which is very good because most of the AI products that you see, the English is from his home country sometimes or from US, that's already a bias. But when you invest this as a human resource person in your organization, you're able to recruit without biases because you involve, I mean AI is garbage in, garbage out. If you put in your accent, it will pick that accent. If you put in your surnames, like what you are being described yesterday, it will pick those surnames. If you say, this, I don't want these people from this region to be employed in this organization, it will pick that, because this is what you put in. But you need to, be get, to get involved from the beginning. 
So one, who is purchasing the system? And uh, from where? So that you understand the background. And then you're able to involve, as HR say, fine, I need to get involved in this acquisition of this blockchain system. Because it's just a, it's just a database. Um, I hope I've tried to answer that. Ben, if I'm not finished, you'll probably add. Um, on the issue of um, what you mentioned about uh, degrees. degrees, oh yeah, so the degrees, um, the issue is really um, trying to ensure that you have, because these are distributed systems, blockchain is a distributed system, so, and I mentioned in my uh, later part of my presentation that distributed systems, if they're authentically done properly, and you've seen this happening, the most application of a distributed system is what? We all know cryptocurrencies, right? But they have all, they had their own share. I didn't want to mention that because I'll confuse you and bring you to multi-level marketing. But now, the, when you look at now the decrease issue, universities, colleges that are training these students, when, when, they, when they develop digital certificates and the employer is also part of that uh, blockchain, the, the, the ledger, then it means you are able to authenticate because this system has already uh, been authenticated and is centralized, and you both have access to it. So you'll not find a, a situation where she's talking about someone coming in without a certificate, which you cannot verify. As I said, the definition of um, a blockchain is immutable ledger, hyper ledger, hyper, you know, a scale. Um, so you're not able to cheat the system. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And um, when I'm talking about the degree will buy you they don't uh, to get into the employment, but the skills. So most people, they fake these papers. So you want to reduce the fake papers that are coming into an institution, you have to deploy blockchain because you don't want to spend a lot of time calling, doing references, and you know, that's a too much routine work for an HR officer or an HR recruitment person to be calling and making references. The blockchain system will do for you because it quickly put in uh, an algorithm that is uh, foolproof and is, because it's a blockchain, it's, um, it's immutable, this algorithm is understood by all the systems in the system, in the, in the blockchain, um, uh, in, the, in the computer in the network, computers in the network. So you are able to replicate and without, without um, having errors. And it's agreed upon all the computers in the system uh, that will give you uh, verifiable and authentic, authentic data. So you reduce the issue of having a lot of fake certificates coming into your organization and it forces you to, or you spend a lot of effort and by six months you've paid these guys a lot of salary and then you realize, no, these guys have fake, fake certificates. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much, Baraza. I think the last question was uh, uh, the online question. Thank you for the presentation. My question is about AI. What are some of the downsides of AI in the HR function? And that has been responded uh, by Mr. McCullough. You see, the, I, believe, said, uh, I believe it will help take away aspects of human touch. So that's the beauty of uh, robots. They can't hear, but they can answer. <laughs> With that, I think uh, give the panelists uh, another round of applause. And thank you for your attention.